In this tutorial, in Adobe Premiere Elements 2018, we're going to give you an introduction to the ABCs of using a keyframe. In order to illustrate that, I have a title on the screen that is nothing other than a big white box. Now I'm going to take my project assets and drag and drop a picture of a pickup and drop that on a higher track. And the picture is smaller than the full screen, so you can see the bounding box. For the sake of this illustration, I'm going to take this box and I'm going to shrink it. I'll hold the mouse on any corner, drag it down, and shrink it. Then I'm going to hold it and move it back to the left side of the screen. Now when we use a keyframe, the keyframe controls some properties. It records at any moment in time, for example on this pickup image, how big it is, how transparent it is, if it's rotated or not, and other kinds of features. So we're going to use this as our illustration. So if I want to keyframe this vehicle to make it look like it's actually going to drive across the screen, let me show you how simple it is to do that. First of all, I make sure I have the image highlighted. And then I go into my effects editor on the right side of my panel. Now, the two effects that are common to every object are motion and opacity. And we're going to work on motion. Now, right now, this tells me that I have scaled it down to 59%. It tells me the center of the image is at this X and Y coordinate, which I can change either by dragging the, across the numbers or by actually moving with the mouse. Uh, it tells me that it's not rotated. This number is 0 and 0. And if I click down on the opacity setting and look at that, I tell it's 100% it's opaque. There's no transparency. We'll focus on the motion for this example of using keyframes. Now, if I want to use keyframes, that means I want to change over time some of these uh, settings on my particular object, which in this case is the pickup. So I'm going to click on the little show hide keyframe controls in the upper right corner of my window and that doubles the size of the window. In this window I have my timeline which is the same length as the timeline of my particular clip in my uh, video project. And then I have all of these features that I can now change over time. The default is to have the playhead at, starting at the left side at the beginning of the object. And so what I need to do is I need to turn on some values. I'm going to click on this timer that will toggle on the animation and you'll see what happens. Everything that can be adjusted turns bright blue. And now I can change any of these features at this point in time. It sets all of these. In other words, it said, okay, at this point in time, the position is locked in at these numbers. The scale is locked in at this number. Scale width here, rotation, and anchor point, and anti-flicker. Let's move the, uh, the playhead over a little bit. We'll move it over this far. And now I, what I'm going to do is at this point in time, I'm going to change a value. I'm going to take the position of the car and drag it to the right and let go. You notice my numbers changed. I didn't change the scale, just the position. And because I did, wherever your uh, timeline indicator is, it will automatically uh, say you've changed values, I'm going to assign this point in time to my new values. Now let's go ahead and play the first part of this. We're going to back up and we're going to hit the play button and it comes on the screen and then it moves this distance. And there's no other keyframe uh, we'll stop this down here. There's no other keyframe uh, anywhere on this particular scale. Let's get back into our controls here. No other keyframe, so it says this is the value we have for where the position of the object is. And so since there's no other position for it to go to, it freezes at this. Likewise, on the second one, the scale was started at 59. And there's no other scale values later on, so it stays at 59. 
if I want to move left and right on any of these scales, I can click the uh, arrow and it will take me from one keyframe point in time to another. And so this is uh, go to the first one, go to the next one. And when they're grayed out, it means there is no next one. Let me go back to the second keyframe point at this moment in time. And at this moment in time, what I'm going to do is I'm not only going to make it uh, uh, at this location, I'm going to make it larger. So I'll leave my playhead at this point, then I'll slowly enlarge it. And the minute I touch the settings, you notice it set a new keyframe, not for position, but for scale. So this will make it look like it's driving toward me a little bit because it gets starts smaller and gets bigger. If I click back on either of these, I see it at the first position. And then if I click forward, I see it at the second position. This is how you create the illusion of movement, because what it does is it calculates I need to move from here to here. I need to grow from this size to this size. And so it actually will do the calculations and change every frame between the first keyframe and the second keyframe. So let's back up a little bit until it pops on the screen and play it. You'll see the difference. OK. So we moved both position and size in this particular example. We're not going to make this too complicated to get started with. But what you can do is you can take any of these and you can modify them. If I want to remove a keyframe, I right click and click on cut. And it will take the keyframe for that value away. Now the difference will be in this case, uh, the position will not change, but the size will. Watch, it will grow right where it sits. There, it grows a lot larger at that particular point in time. So we'll click back on the image, and go back to our motion controls. So this is how you begin to adjust a keyframe. I can actually make it move uh, several ways. Let's go back to this second one here. And we'll add a keyframe by changing the value of position. I can do it over here. I can do it simply by dragging it. If I want it to be perfectly horizontal, all I need to do is drag the mouse over the first, the left number there. So I'm going to move it there. And then let's, let's have it start in and move there. And then we'll move it down. We'll go over a little farther in our timeline. Let's say to this location. And, and now with this in a different location, any value I change will change the timeline. I will change the, we'll start a keyframe, I mean. So we'll take the, the, uh, the picture and we'll drag it down further. And notice it set a keyframe. It said, aha, you're at a different position. We'll also increase the size. And we, we change the size as well, the scale. So let's go ahead and play what we have here. We'll back it up. And it pops on the screen, goes to the center, and goes down. You could actually go in a circle if you wanted to. There's no limit to what you can do when you're actually working with a keyframe. This is, this is what is used behind the scenes on the presets when you use those for a picture-in-picture, picture, like what we're working on in this particular case. So this gives you a little bit of a clue as to how to use it. If you want to start all over with the keyframes, um, you can click on the toggle animation. It will say, do you want to delete them? And I'll say, OK, and they're all gone. If I want to change the scale back to my normal scale. I click on the reset button, and now it changes it to the default size it had when we started. So you can experiment with this all you want. This gives you lots of options as to how you can begin to move things on the screen. You're not forced to use the presets that come in the effect room. You can design your own keyframes over time. And we'll give you more details in future lessons.